I say, hey, do you care about your athletes? Their unanimous answer is yes. And if I say how, it gets into, well, we kind of do whatever. And I'm like, that's the problem. I'm like, no one's giving me a ball. The girl with the iron lung, make sure she shoots. I actually feel like there's two different types of people. There's the first person who climbed Mount Everest, and then there's the person who shows everybody how to do it. Welcome back to the Jasmine Star Show. I am with my co-host, Marcus Murphy. Hello. And this has been a good run. I have felt so good with the conversations that we had. Yeah. And I kind of want to take an opportunity um, to number one, thank you for this. And let's like bring this full circle. I'm so happy that we had that conversation on the front end because when uh, Johnny mentioned interviewing at Yelp, like yeah. listeners were able to put that in context. Yeah, yeah. And there then, were a few different times. That yeah. yeah, and yeah. then Matt was talking about LinkedIn learning yep. and like people were on the journey with us. And yeah. so I think that that was really good and we got to like know you yes, and we got to know the dream that you put up on the dream wall. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Um, I think later in this episode, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out a favor and I want you to practice your late night interview skills with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. I, like that. I have, I, yeah, I already have 20 questions for you. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so I want to start though, like we're now we're, now we're up to speed. Yeah. And so we left the story where you were doing consulting right? and then you were like, I'm, I need to find myself yes. and you now, I mean, I jokingly, like I, I poke fun and I do it in love, but you're a CEO of a bona fide bomb business. And yeah. I want to start about like that origin story. Right. You know, I feel like it's actually something that maybe you'll relate to as well is there was a bit of personality in there, like a bit of like where I was becoming a personality saying, okay, I'm a speaker, I'm going to shows. And that was a big part of who I am. And then there was a new identity. I, one, I stopped posting on LinkedIn, which I don't know if anybody really noticed, I, but I didn't for almost a year and a half to the point where like LinkedIn was going, are you okay? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. are you all right? Because you were a major contributor in this way or just some of that circuit that I used to do. Yep. But I felt like I needed to figure out what it's like to be a technology CEO. And I, I spent a ton of time just interviewing, finding other people. Like uh, there's a couple of pivotal people that are worth shouting out. But David Cancel, he started a company called Drift uh, and they grew like a rocket ship. And I just look at these people and I'm like, how are you doing this? And so gracefully and all that stuff. Mm. Guess what? They're not. They're mm -hmm. not at all. They're just people who have put on the new identity that that's who they are now. And mm. they're still using that vehicle to accomplish their goals. So it doesn't matter whether it's a technology company for me or it was an event or it was me speaking. It just had to be able to be the vehicle to get me to where I wanted to go. And I think that's where the story probably mm. is now is that I am developing something that aligns with where I ultimately want to go in life, that I have a fun time building with people that I actually care about. And it's led us to five, which is um, in the sports world, a closed sourced community application uh, for athletic organizations. And it's, it sounds super boring to say it like that, but it, it's a lot more fun because it is, it's like who puts business and sports, like business education and sports together. But if you look at the alternative, the worst catastrophic things that are happening to athletes in the world is because they are under-resourced and disconnected and isolated and alone. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Wait, yeah. hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Okay. So we, we went through like the fancy stuff, but we need to have a moment and give a shout out to our girl, like Riri, because Rihanna uh -huh. disappears. Yeah, yeah. And then she comes back. I, I, please let me be Rihanna. Okay, I'll, so, take I'll take that. I'll take that. So like, you kind of went uh, silent to yeah. go back and like find out like the, the, the new version. And so I kind of just yeah. want to like honor that space because yeah. so few people actually have the courage. Like, and for people who don't know, like you were like, a, like a voice on LinkedIn, like a yeah. force actually. And so for you to go quiet, it's for you to do like the inner work. Yeah. And then can I, can I repeat back what I think when you talk about the five, like yeah, yeah, sure. what that actually is? Yeah, sure. Please. So athletes yeah. are, have been good most of their life at their particular sport. Great at it. Yeah. And so yeah. then they get to a point and then they get people around them who know more yeah. than they do. And then yes. it's very common to abdicate a lot of the other stuff so that they can focus on what their skill is. And right. that is to be an athlete. And that is to be like a standout. Right. And then a lot of athletes get to a point in time where like they're entirely different people. Like they have more money, oh, they yeah. have more resources, they have more following. Like that. Overnight. Yeah. And then they didn't develop the skill set to actually understand what that life looks like as celebrity and then thereafter, and then as a hundred thousand air millionaire, like hundred yeah. millionaire yeah. thereafter. Yeah. And so you saw a gap in the market. Well, I saw a gap in two ways. So one, there's an education gap. Okay. So start, wait, how do we get there? How did we get there? How do we get to the education gap? Yeah. Like how do you, so what, you're like watching the NBA and like, there is an education <laughs> no, gap. No, no, no. So, um, I, I am very uniquely placed in this last two years of kind of going silent. I've happened to 
become friends with some massively influential elite athletes in the world. And what I realized is like, wow, you're not that different than a lot of these high capacity people that I meet in our business world. It's just that they understand more of like what they're supposed to do. And they, they, that's what they're focused on. How did you become friends with these athletes? Yeah. So, uh, funny stories. I have a, a silent business partner named Ben Bellucci and such a cool name. That right? is. Yeah. So he's my cousin. <laughs> and he's a, he's a really, it's funny because if you see him and which you guys will probably, you could look him up and he's like this tall model. He's beautiful. And like, oh, I see him on your yeah. Instagram all the time. Yeah. yeah. He's like, literally if people are like, yo, um, are you carrying that guy's bags? Cause that's really cool. Uh, but he's a NBA trainer. So when oh. we, when we, when I first started saying the idea behind, I want to create world-class education, I want it to be a certain pillars. Like I want it to be sales, marketing, leadership, wealth, and wellness. Like that's what I felt like was the core foundational elements that every entrepreneur should have. And then I started saying, well, that's makes sense for every entrepreneur to have those foundational elements. But then I started meeting these pro athletes, these people that literally have all those commas yeah. that you talked about, but are going bankrupt and don't know how to do social media and like literally don't know what to do with brand deals when they come through. They had no idea. And that's at the highest level mm -hmm. of sport. And so I said, wow, I wonder if this is a problem at lower levels through the middle, like where are they getting their education? And I'm not talking about colleges, universities. Right. I'm talking about the real functional world stuff that, that they need to know to navigate. Like their, what, their like life. investing, balancing? In, a investing, yeah, balancing a checkbook is so wild, but there are a majority of people that I've met, adults, that still don't do that. They don't even yeah. look at their bank accounts. Like I'm yeah. talking about fundamentally different mindset shifts. So not, not financial literacy, like wealth mm. building, money yeah. teams, like where, what is, what is the, what's the market saying and how do you even read it, right? Like what's your portfolios? Those types of financial pieces are big, but then if you go over on the other side, it's like leadership, leading yourself, the the ability to have a conversation, communication skills, and then you go wellness, wellness, so the idea of like mental mental health and putting it in the forefront of the conversation. So I knew that there was a gap, not only for elite athletes, but just people in general. And so we needed to come and build a format that was educating in those pillars and then being able to deliver mm. in a way that they they get it. Okay, so I find it intriguing. Like, if you look back at it, did you know that you were going after one of like the most lucrative markets? <laughs> no. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're not it, the first person to think of like the need and gap of education. Right, right. And then what you went to is like, I'm just gonna target millionaires. Yeah, the, like, the, the total addressable market for this is billions and billions of dollars, right? And well, you, here's the crazy thing. Yeah. Total addressable market is billions, and millions of dollars, but how many like users? Yeah, yeah, so it's really, like, it's, a small, it's a small, small market. <laughs> But it's a domino. So right. we knew that if we could get the elite athletes in major professional sports leagues across the world, that everyone else that is in an organized sport that gets money. So think about this. There's 500 NBA athletes in the world, period, right? One of them is my business partner, which is cool in this event. His name's Admiral Schofield. You guys will meet him, hear him, whatever. But the whole point is, out of those little 500, that's a very small percentage of everything I'm talking about. Because on the university side, there are 700,000 athletes that are in, uh, in the universities. And, and like, I'll give you an example. So like, uh, you went to, where'd you go, UCLA? UCLA Law School. UCLA Law School, where'd you I go? I mean, it from? wasn't like the Harvard a cafeteria. <laughs> the, the Harvard of the West, <laughs> uh, four letters. But I do, think, I do think that if you look at a program like that, they have 27 varsity sports, okay? They have a 1,000 student athletes, and all of them are getting, like, their actual budget, their operating budget for UCLA sports. What do you think it is? I have no idea. I wouldn't even begin. I would I, it, 250 million on average. Okay. Right? Per annum. Okay. So why is it so high? Why are we putting so much money into athletics of these big, I'm talking about student athletes, right? Why are we putting that much money in it? The entertainment the eyeballs, the the way that they're putting money in because that also feeds all the students who come and pay right. hundreds of thousands to go there. Right. The alma mater, the, I mean, it's a big deal. So I know that if we get the elite athletes of the world at the top level to start saying, using this and practically functionally becoming like not only the education part, but organizing their lives. I, I'll give you an example. This is totally funny, but Admiral, if we, if we were calling him right now, I'd say Admiral. No, well, what team, you have to explain, like what team does he play for? Admiral, like Admiral plays for uh, the Orlando Magic. Okay. okay? Uh, and he played, he was an All-American at the University of Tennessee. And we met because of my cousin through my good looking cousin who doesn't look <laughs> anything like me. Uh, and, and when we met the first time, we knew when he started talking to me about the current state of his world, he was like, we still send text messages to each other not to miss the plane. And I'm like, 
you're at a hundred, like a, a billion dollar industry. And these guys are sending each other WhatsApp group messages in terms of communication when they're, when they need to get like a, uh, some type of, uh, Hey, Hey guys, here's some wealth education. It's a speaker who comes in every once in a while. Right. Okay. But if I went into every front office, which I have and these big, amazing, like the magic. And I say, Hey, do you care about your athletes? Their unanimous answer is yes, we do. And if I say how it gets into the, well, we kind of, do whatever. And I'm like, that's a problem. And that's mm -hmm. a solvable problem. So we can solve it through education. We can solve it through platform and we can give them the community they so desperately deserve and what's going to help them at that level. And also the education that they've missed most of their lives to enable them to have this really flourishing, amazing experience. And when they flourish, the whole organization flourishes. Okay. But let's are. go back. Let's go back. You have this idea, like these five <laughs> pillars and yeah. you're like, it's going to be education. Yeah, and how do I get there? Uh, like, and then like, so then you meet Admiral and you're like, it, it all kind of, it kind of clicked for me because when I first went into it, I, I wanted to teach, I wanted to create like an edge, uh, a community of entrepreneurs. So I wanted to, I wanted to yeah. teach people. Right. Yeah. But then I realized that that's such a broad stroke Yes. that it needed to find something that was kind of like my carved out niche. I needed to find something that to, to apply it. And even if it grows to something big, I still wanted to start in like a myopic way. Right. So sports, which I very passionate about when I saw that, I was like, huh, so there's no real entrepreneurship education in this Dang, world. Dang, Marcus. Yeah. And so here's the cool thing. So like the show that we're about to do, I know I'm skipping ahead, but the show that I'm launching is taking that distilled version of business education from some of the most elite athletes and elite performers. Think of actors, artists, people that we really think are like essentially the skyscraper version that all of us love. But I want to go to the dig version of that skyscraper and find out what foundations they set up to make that look like it popped up overnight and it's so great and successful. And we don't talk about that. We celebritize the end result and we typically the journey's not sexy. Okay. So you figure out it's the niche and then you said, Oh, lucky for me, I'm going to pick a niche that's worth billions. Mm -hmm. Smart move. And then you get a, <laughs> a co-founder who really does legitimize the, the, the inner workings of it and can yeah. speak to that experience. Yeah. And then you're able to pull on connections from previous. My board right now is full of Hall of Fame athletes mm. in the NHL, the NFL, the NBA. Because they understand the need for it. Because they are literally sitting there going, I wish I had this when I was playing. And did you fundraise? Oh, we did, yeah. And you, have you ever fundraised before? Never. I had to figure it all out, which is a wild world. But it's basically way. like you're on the traffic and conversion stage again and again and again and again, all the time. pitching. Yeah. So, but but what what's interesting is a lot of people have money, but it's not everybody's money you want. So that mm. that's the new world for me. We were raising two point five million dollars as a seed. That's like pre revenue, no platform. It's like conceptual. by our idea. Yes, exactly. Okay. And you're saying at that point that our valuation is 10 million for just an idea and the people that are involved. It's a $10 million idea, <laughs> yeah. gentlemen. D but you know what's, what's wild is it's a game because in the technology world, that is a very common Yes, occurrence. it is. So what is the best story that we can tell? What is the best team that we can put together that says that people can confidently go, these guys are going to go execute that and figure it out? Yeah. And so, yeah, one of our, our CFO is a former VP of software at Apple, right? Like we have a team that looks like they can execute on this very specific thing that is timely. And that's what we raised money off of. And I had so many meetings with people where they're like, yeah, I could write you a check for 250,000. And I remember all of us sitting there going, we don't want that person on our team. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's tough that, that, cause sometimes in the beginning you're like, Oh, I just want that money. Cause that legitimizes right. this whole thing. And right. then eventually we're like, no, it's not about the money. It's about the people that can make it go faster. So Let's break down the business and then move into the dig because <laughs> yeah. like, I want to know the purpose. I want to know the purpose of the dig. Yeah. So if I am a student athlete, yes. I will be able to download an app. Correct. It'll be on their mobile. Yeah. And I go through the app and then I am there able to find, um, like, so let's say I'm a college athlete. I mean, look at me. I'm like all of you, five, two on a good day. A you know, athlete. it's like, yeah, <laughs> like no one's giving me a ball. The girl, the iron lung, make sure she shoots. Um, so wait, like, wait, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. I see you. You're athletic. Maybe you're not an athlete. You're athletic though. Hold on, let me hair flip. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all these all these workout fake videos on Instagram. It's like, yeah, really, it's a sham, guys. What a shadow. No, I know I you're Photoshop. athletic. Photoshop. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, no, and I do appreciate it. Okay, so anyway, yeah. I open this app. I'm in the basket weaving athletic club at UCLA. And so okay. then I open the I open the app. Yeah. And I'm What's just like, it? yeah, maybe, maybe I get an endorsement. Now that with the NCAA, I am able to get money and monetize my name and likeness. And I'm sitting on $32,000 and I'm like, 
I can buy myself a car yeah. or I can go in and get some education on what I might be able to do for a, a long-term investment. Yeah. It's prescriptive in that way. So the admin version, so somebody at the organization, similarly to having like a CRM or somebody that manages Salesforce okay. in the organization, there would be an admin in that organization. So the UCLA athletic department is going to have somebody. Yeah. Who's okay. their technical director or any okay. of those people. And they run the community. So on the back end, they're looking at all the profiles from all their players, all the data and inputs for that player. So you can literally, depending on the integration, see if they slept last night. You can see if they went to their physio based on their calendar integration. You can look at if they're active or not active. You can see if they've consumed content, how much of it, how long, how far. You can do all these things by being literally by pushing that to their to their application. The secret though is is it's private. So I'm not building a social network. We're building a platform and a community that's closed circuited because one of the biggest fears of every sports organization is that something leaks outside. So I'm not talking about Twitter right now. I'm not trying to connect Instagram, which I know mm -hmm. probably breaks your heart. No, but it, not but, at but, all. But truly, they all. want this private experience where they don't have like they don't have community. They have community because teams, right? They have community, yes. but they don't have a way of having that community outside of a physical space. Mm. So in lies an opportunity to create community and best, guess what? You, the best education in the world is inside of a community. Like yes, all this is. disparate kind yes. of like whatever, yes. if you put it in there and now you've got a captive audience and you can start being prescriptive with, Hey, you want to learn about investing? Here you go. Hey, here's a whole, whole series of talks around NIL. Now you've got everybody right here in their world that they live on, which is their phone. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's really great. And the fact that it's mandated from the universities or the sports organization. So it's not an option to download it. That's where we communicate. That's where your calendar is. Push notifications go there. So yep. it's not like texting about don't miss the plane. It's like, hey, guys, uh, it's workout time. Don't miss practice. Here's your physio appointment. Like all of those little things that currently don't exist. Mm. And so what's wild is I'm speaking about it because there are some things like it. We don't want to go into a, a competitive market and be the first ones. I always laugh because people are like, want to be a pioneer. But many times when you're the first person to it, you got to ask yourself two questions. Why am I the first person here? <laughs> yeah. Because One, because that's expensive to be the first person there. Yeah. It's, a, it's expensive because you have to educate the market. And then the other part is when you show up and all of a sudden, like nobody else is there, was it, did somebody else try it? And it was just like, has anybody heard of the Oregon trail? <laughs> you know, I was like, dying all the time at gangrene, <laughs> gangrene. I ate the wrong thing. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to be a part of the first wave, <laughs> yeah, you know? Um, yeah. But, but there is a beauty in that. I was just saying this, uh, off camera, but you know, there is somebody that sits there. Like you've been to Phoenix, Arizona a yes. couple times in your life, right? Mm -hmm. There was something, but you've also been in that. That's a desert. Yeah. So somebody had to walk across that desert and look out there and go, this is home. Right. I can make this work. Right. You're an insane person. Right. But they're not so insane now, are they? Right. So I think that what we're looking at is kind of like, I'm not afraid of being first, but I want something that's like in the category, but I can be just outside yeah. adjacent to yeah. the category. Okay. So you fundraise, you right. assemble a team, you've yeah. cast a vision, yes. you've got people onboarded. Right. There are students and um, athletic technical directors running this. <laughs> no more text messages, get on the plane and here's your physio. This is all in here. Yeah. It stays in one, one, like one wrap, one app to rule them all essentially. Okay. The idea. And so then you're like the wheels in the bus and it's moving. Yes. And then you're introducing the dig Yeah. as uh, as what brand yeah, yeah. awareness funneling yeah. what's going on there so I'm and then explain the show explain the show like i'm five okay so i think every single company needs a top of funnel awareness play right okay because attention's hard to get yes and you have to have if you're going to do a show or launch a podcast or launch something it should be tied in directly to aggregating an audience of potential avatars but also just the brand recognition as well yeah right? in basically the yeah i'm gonna repeat this <laughs> You want to get famous for people who will buy from you. Right. That's correct. it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, you're like a top of level awareness of classified Amazars. And I was like, let me do a little interpretation. And expeditiously. <laughs> um, but I do think, I do think that what's, what's wild is at the top of funnel, it also itches a major scratch for scratches and itch. That I have. Yes. Yes. Guys, it itches a scratch. It itches a scratch. Yes, it's been a long day. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> but I do think I do think that what it is is like I know that one of the things that gets me up in the morning that I love is this. I love this. Mm -hmm. I could do this all for, for the rest of my life, and I want to. If I can create and the narrative at the top, and I can enter interview and speak with really interesting people for the rest of my life, and extract information that I know my community wants, 
especially in this sports yes. world, then it's going to be it's what it's the strategy. Yeah. Now here's here's what the dig is. And a five the five, you said five year old. Yes, okay. like explain it like you're explaining it to Pearl. Okay. <laughs> Your honey, daughter Pearl. Honey, sit down. Okay. <laughs> Put the knife away. Um, my my uh the best way I can say it is I had a talk that I did about skyscrapers. And I used to say it to early people in their careers, or I would use it if I was going to a different thing. But the skyscraper is this. I was in college once. Remember that place? Yes. Were you ever in a dorm? Yes. Okay. Like a jail cell with like a window, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was at a dorm and I used to look out of our one window and there was always a hole in the ground and they were building some building, but there was a big hole in the ground and they would just move dirt from here to here and here to here. And then it would never, nothing was being built. I thought it was like the biggest scam because the entire semester was like, there was nothing that ever was built, but there's a massive hole. So I always thought something was wrong. And then I leave for a break and I come back and it was the middle of the night. And I remember getting in and going to bed. And when I woke up in the morning, my view was gone. There was a building there, almost seeming like it was overnight. And then I started being like, well, that's crazy. But if you look at architecture or you look at buildings and especially skyscrapers, the majority of the work is done under the surface. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have to go down as far as you want to go up. And so when you, you do sort of like it, not, not this way, like they don't have a skyscraper under the ground, oh, okay. but they go down. I'm so gullible. I was like, say less. <laughs> they, yeah, there's, like, a, the there's, an, core. there's an empire state building <laughs> underneath an empire state building. Um, no, that, that's, but they do have to go to the bedrock. So it, they have to drill down to the bedrock. So like in New York city, all those buildings are literally down on the bedrock to keep them erect. Like, wow. That. So when, okay. when you think about skyscraper, the one thing that always resonates with me as an entrepreneur or anything that I do is that this should take longer, but we don't know what they're doing down there. So like when you think about the dig, when somebody wants to go start a business, we always throw them a hammer or we say, go jump off the thing and build the plane on the way down. Right. Oh, yeah. But instead of handing somebody a hammer, you should hand them a shovel because it's actually not about building something quick. It's about building to the necessary foundation so that that thing that goes up stays, right? So for me, I want to know the dig story for these people. Like I want to sit down like with Jasmine Starr and sit here and go like, tell me your dig story. Tell me all the stuff that's not above the surface that it took for you. And how did that foundationally develop? Is this a talk show? Yeah. What's that? It's a talk show? Yeah, it's a talk show. Oh. Yeah. And so you're bringing on... Famous athletes. Famous athletes, famous people. And you want to know their dig story. I want to, I want to get to their dig story. Mm. Pearl. Mm. <laughs> That's, okay, I got it. What's the goal? Season one, how many people? There's 10. There's 10 people in the first season. Okay. We've already, we've already been working on it. Yeah. And so but, you have them lined up? Yes. We have a couple of people that I'm still, like they have publicists and people to navigate, but big time, huge uh, folks who have, like by all means, if we look at them and go, wow, they did something huge but we know the thing they did huge but we don't know the like it's Steph Curry right yeah so Steph is the best shooter in the NBA so good at everything but he shoots a thousand three-pointers a day like his his actual preparation we aren't in love with because we want the game and the lights but he can unpack that part and then here's the other part it's not just about that stuff it's about how they set up their lives so these people will be speaking about business They'll be speaking about the business of their life, how they invest their teams. Like they will. They're going to speak about the pillars that are on the inside. The foundational pillars. Of okay. Their life. Yes. Great. And then, um, but you, you had said you want to build awareness for the person who's going to buy from you. Yeah. yeah. But the person who's buying from you is essentially an athletic department. It's an athletic department, but also in addition to that. So that's one avatar of our business. Okay. The rest of it is a learning community of people who want to learn from elite athletes. So business owners are a big one. They can one to many buy into a community. Application. Did you just get the model <laughs> and leverage it to an entirely different audience? Yeah. Because stop right now. Yeah. So the, the idea stop. was that we start, we start one too many inside of organizations, but we knew that we were going to build a learning platform where we bring in these elite athletes who teach business and also these elite people that teach business, but only principles of their foundational elements. I mentioned just the five. Now are you getting my name for our business. Yeah. My <laughs> mind is going in a thousand different directions right now. So, so imagine that if I can start in a way where it's like these organizations, these teams, they're running this app, they're using our content. And then I want that to be a general population thing where every person now can have a seat inside of a learning community where they're learning from some of the most elite people on the planet who are distilling down how they build the foundational elements of their life. So we, we know that it's- Is there any proprietary information that goes to the athletic department outside? If, if, they, like if they create it. 
Oh. And the other part is we've been partnering with the beta group in order, like sometimes they're creating content that's good for everybody else and we want to buy that. So we can actually evergreen it into the platform. Or you could just discount how much they're paying for the app, right? And so all those things. Dang. But, but But what I think is fun is this is the kind of stuff, because if you're sitting here listening, somebody's probably going, this is really complex and crazy. But the fun part about it is, is like, this is uncharted territory. Yeah, it is. So we get to be a little bit creative in the way that we do it and nothing's wrong. Like whether I started that or I created a social media platform, it doesn't even matter. The fact is we've carved out a niche where we understand that there is an entrepreneurial educational gap in athletics, but there's also a lot of people who love those athletes who would love to learn. Like imagine learning franchising from Shaq. Mm. I would listen. Mm -hmm. I also adore Shaq and I like him as a DJ. So, Mm -hmm. but you see what I'm saying? There's an allure around sports that is different than anything else in the world. Like even celebrities, they will literally celebrities, musicians, like everybody wants to go to the game, sit on court side. There's something about sports that is this interconnectivity yeah, and tissue is. that I just can't explain to you. Mm-hmm. But if you can now say those people aren't athletes, they're business owners. And mm-hmm. here's like, let the, here's all the things they can teach you about mm-hmm. how they run their life and organize it. And have you guys already worked through the rev model for the people who are creating like the, how, yeah, how they, how much money they get and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Dang. It, it runs on a similar model. to like a master class or like, Got it. remember, um, who's our friend that did, uh, the creative life, creative life. Chase yeah. Jarvis. Yeah. Chase. Yeah. Right. So it's like, an, a, it is, a, it'll, it'll be studios. It'll be a, cre- there's a creation element to it where we can partner with creators and experts, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but also we have our own platform mm-hmm. that will be a bit more of the marketplace that Dang, uh, man, if I was wearing a cowboy hat, I'd take it off and I'd just dust your feet. You just walk through that can I, Venetian okay. desert. All right. I'm going to deflect. Ready? And, wait, 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 oh, I but I, I need to, not, not yet. Because you did say I was athletic, right? Do you want me to teach? I feel like I, I need to ask I, I your I team. I don't, see, I don't see anybody else affirming the athleticism. So it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, no, By the no, way, no. everyone, that's if you're watching this and people, listeners, I'm holding up a glass. This is coffee. Yes. Yeah, we're not boozing. I, I feel like we could be. We but could this be. Is, this is definitely some really I don't good. Drink, I don't drink dark liquor. really I don't. good. But cheers, dude. Hey, Cheers Thank to that journey. You. Thank you. You came back like Rihanna, like showing off her fancy during the Super Bowl. You did not come to play, baby. You, like <laughs> next day you wake up $80 million richer. That was a great red outfit that she had on. By the way, oh wait, real quick. But I, I've also done things where I've kept it, my foot in the game because events have always been my thing too. Yep. I now own two of them, which I think yep. is great. Not as a full owner, but I'm, I, I've finally, it was a dream of mine to own yep. one. You're coming out to support it, which is pretty exciting. I love that. And I think that that's where I'm talking about. I feel like I can continue to do those things. My worlds can collide because they're all media content focused. And if I can continue to build the stable and have like access to great, incredible Mm. practitioners, then it all works really well together. And I can have best of both worlds there. And I just have to say like how selfish I am. Cause I was like, I, I just feel like if you're selfish, but you call your selfish outness, like you call it out for it's what okay. it is, is le- it's less bad. So <laughs> I'll right. just call it out. Tell like yeah. I really wanted to get into your brain and your network because you think so differently. Mm-hmm. And I think that you're carving out your own path, but it's like, um, you're the first person to look in the Phoenician desert and say, this is home. And like, I want to be part of that second crew to be like, <laughs> did you not die? All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go. I'll be a part owner of an event. But, uh, you know what? No, you're I'm not, not giving tired it. of speaking at events. I want to own one too. So Actually, you, I was thinking Johnny should have his own gallery. Johnny should have his own gallery. His own gallery. All the time. Feature other yeah. artists. Yes. But then have his show charge the same prices as yeah. any other gallery and yeah. get 100. Yeah. Okay. But, I, but Johnny's also the kind of person that would just want to do that to put people on for free. So okay. there's a whole different well, mindset. Well, he needs to consult with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But, but I, I, I will say this. Um, so the thinking that we just talked about, like yes. seeing a city in a desert. Yes. Right? The, co- the habitation of that. Yeah. I actually feel like there's two different types of people. There's the first person who climbed Mount Everest, and then there's the person who shows everybody how to do it. Oh, oh. Oh, does that make that's sense to you? That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> because I feel like what we've all been obsessed with is being the first, but yep. I actually think that most of us should be meditating on being a Sherpa. Like mm. there is some beautiful thing. Like you can never make anybody climb it. Like I always think, I, mean, I don't know why I'm sticking with Mount Everest, but let's just use it. Mm-hmm. Mount Everest has been there. We know how to get to the top. So how, why are, why don't we not all do it? And I, th- I think, I think there's something about the ability to understand that the path is there. You, you can put people's feet on it, but you can't make them climb. Mm-hmm. And there's a massive need for the people that came after the person who put the path there to show everyone else where the path is and that it's accessible. Amen. And so I love that 
I have this vision for how to build a city in a desert or whatever mm-hmm. it is. But I also understand that that doesn't happen without people who, mm-hmm. what I said on the ladder there. Mm-hmm. But you understand, you, you, you understand you're not doing that. What's that? Building in public. <laughs> Building in public is what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well aren't you saying like, I think I strongly identified with it because I'm just like, I will not, I will never, I haven't ever, I don't think it's my makeup to be the first, but hot dang, like I have learned the skill of being a Sherpa. Of course. I don't have to be the best or the fastest, but I'm like, I'm a good Sherpa. Yeah, but I, I but, think you're, yeah, I think you're, I think you're not just a good Sherpa, but I also feel like what, because you're in that position to be a Sherpa so much, you are a pioneer because it puts you out at some place where there's responsibility to be a pioneer. Okay, but like if, if, you, like, if you're just really thinking beholden, metaphors. like, <laughs> we're like we're, but you're beholden to this idea that like it, it you, what, actually, let me identify. Okay. Are you the first to Everest right now as you do this? This will be, this will be, yeah, this will be base camp one or two. For okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cause that's different. Yeah. Because if you were saying that like it, we, we are almost in some ways beholden to, sh- to share the journey. Right. Do you believe that you are? Yes. How so? Um, I think that what I've done now, I'm willing to share in people's experience. So like getting somebody to come into this experience. Why do I have a show? Yes, it's, of course, I will say, <laughs> and no, as a business person, I'll say, yes, it's to- for to, Top of funnel yeah, awareness for the avatar. And like, yeah, we can throw out a bunch of acronyms. The real thing is, is that it's an invitation. So I really believe that this is my invitation at the top of the funnel for people to come inside. And I, and what I mean by that is not as a customer per se, but to join in on the journey. And it's funny, I, I would love, it's almost like I'm going up Everest, but everybody can watch. And I am going into some uncharted territory in the way that I'm choosing my niche. Mm-hmm. But I also believe that um, I can't get there without everybody else. So mm-hmm. there is a part of me that's a little bit like, I'll, I'm happy to go first, but I would love to go first with people behind me and making mm-hmm. sure that I'm okay. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, I've, I've been okay with that. Well, yeah. I'm happy to be on that journey. I do think that I would like to see more selfishly. Yeah. Like I had to, I had to, Peel back I had to layers. cajole you to yeah. come down to SoCal to record this. But like every so often Should I want to cajole. I mean, are Gosh. you just impressed? I'm like I just, a homeschooler. I, I mean, I don't know. It's like, should we give my mom some props <laughs> or my dad? Ca- cajole, you know, like, cajole. Cajole. Like uh, my dad. I haven't heard anybody say cajole. Guys. Well, just I just, say, now you're going to go home cajole. and like, C A J O L E. C A J O L E. All right. Yes. Uh, my dad right. so you, at Reader's dad. Digest. Yes. He would read his Reader's Digest oh. when he was like teaching himself how to read. And so he would go through these quizzes of like words. Mm-hmm. And so thank you, Reader's Digest and Daddy late at night. But I feel like <laughs> you are such a magnetic character. And yes, you're inviting people on the dig, but like, you, it already looks at you at Everest and you're putting a chair next to you, inviting another person so look, who's climbed their Everest. If, if I would have had a, a camera crew with me this entire last year and a half um, and, and even what we're doing now, it would be really interesting to document our build. Mm-hmm. It would be really interesting to do that. Oh, well, especially as like a black founder of a SaaS company. Yeah, it's a like, little bit different. It's kind of like so rare. Like you, yeah. you out here like a black unicorn, you know, <laughs> like you're the extra well, rare. I think, I think <laughs> it's funny because uh, some people don't know that I'm black at all. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the best. Breaking news. Some people were just like, somebody just leaned into their YouTube channel and was like, I don't, I don't think so, bro. Color correction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I don't, uh, Jasmine might be tripping. I, I, I actually, I actually do think that there's something about being a minority founder. There's something about that also being not my entire identity. Right. But I also think that, yeah, I think there's a, a responsibility in that to be like, it's a, it's, it is something to be cognizant of. And, also, and you don't need a film crew. No, I don't. You have a, your phone. <laughs> you have your phone. Are you, what is, is this an intervention? Yeah, it this is. This is an intervention. No, it's called, no, it's I called, it's down. called an excavation. Yes, There's yeah. no intervention. Like I'm, yeah. I'm trying to bring out, like I selfishly want to see what it is you're doing. It is so powerful. Yeah. And just to see the way right. that you. I haven't shared. I've, I've, he, <laughs> I've been digging and I know that sounds so bizarre, full circle there, but mm. that will come out. Okay. But I feel like, yeah, I feel like I picked up the shovel for the last two years. Good for you. And I haven't hit my bedrock Good just for yet. You. Yeah. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Okay, so ladies. metaphors did we did we do? I don't know. Everybody got lost. Everest, it's like we're out here, uh, like you're so Rihanna, built. I'm Rihanna building yeah. on the Oregon Trail <laughs> into Phoenix <laughs> yeah. without water. And now you're yeah. climbing Everest yeah, with yeah, a Sherpa. Yeah, somebody got it. There's some poetry in there. I mean, I mean, we're, maybe we just think that we're, we're super deep. <laughs> like yeah. we're like out here trying to be professional I, podcasters. I hope somebody got that and was like, yeah, those guys are really Okay, so, so. If if you if you were still with us and yeah. you send Marcus 
like an Oregon Trail gif <laughs> on Instagram, like you will know, like you a real ride or die. <laughs> All yeah. of a sudden oh he's like, God. dysentery Don't. gif. Why would no. you do that? I do like a good gif. I do like So it. we communicate in gifs. I, like we communicate in gifs and memes. Yeah. Like it's just, we have whole conversations. I have a group chat like that. And also, yeah, I feel like sometimes a, a gif says more than what you're trying to say. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Am I allowed to flip the script and ask you questions? Yeah. Or can yeah. I do that? Or yes. did you have another one? But we should name your show. What's your show? What's my show? Yeah. In the future. Uh, well, I think most people are just their name. So it oh, okay. like, has to be like some kind Marcus of- Mayo Marcus, Murphy. <laughs> Marcus Mayo Murphy. Marcus Mayo Murphy show. Uh, yeah, I actually- I Marcus do, Murphy show. I like it. I will say this. I I want to say one, one tiny thing that I took on partners in the beginning of my business. And I've also wanted a co-host for a long time. And a lot of that was because I never felt like I could fill the bill Ooh. as an individual. Mm. And so I want people to understand that I don't have any part. I have some partners, but they serve all these different purposes. I don't have this new show is me. It's mm. just me. I have rotating people that come through and will mm -hmm. be kind of personalities on the show. But I think that if you're going to have a show, it's kind of that, that, what that dream I, I articulated earlier, there's an, you have to be okay with being the one mm. in some ways. And I just don't think I've ever was ever. I don't think I was ready for that. And just so we're on the same page. So, so you're yeah. ready. Yeah. So Mayo, I love that. Marcus Mayo. I love Murphy. it. Um, well, I am going to ask you a couple of questions because you've been so gracious in opening your home and doing this really cool co-hosting thing, which I think is such a brilliant idea. And by the way, everybody's going to love this. The reason why they love it is because there are really intimate relationships. So this person also feels really like they want it to be really great people. And they like, yeah, really, it's very intentional. And so I know your next co-host is going to be, you know, s almost as good as me, but I feel like they're very little. Yeah. They're small shoes to fill. I know <laughs> it's going to be hard. <laughs> uh, but let me ask you a couple questions. Cause I think that it, it, you're always the one asking questions. I have known you for, 14 years. And I did write you that letter, but I want to tell you a story you don't know. Okay. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. So my wife and I, uh, we were becoming photographers and I didn't even know what that meant. I just knew that it was a really cool industry. And there was, cause it was, it was p business owners with cameras. Like right. that's what it felt like. And I right. was like, Oh, I can get down with this. I like this. But there was only one place to go if you were trying to learn both of those things. And it was called WPPI. Do you remember WPPI? Yes. So this was like, by the way, this is a throwback, right? WPPI doesn't exist, does it? Is it still going? Um, we don't know. It's fit, yeah. If but it back is, in the day, it was, it was like it, it was it was the place for um, wedding and portrait photographers. Yes, mm -hmm. and but also like there was big time followings. There was a lot of photographers that wanted to check and see Jasmine, right? They wanted mm -hmm. to hear you speak, and that's kind of the first time I was like, "Whoa, Jasmine's not my photographer for my wedding. She's like." this personality who's sharing and opening her whole world to everybody about how she runs her business. And from that, everybody was like beating down the doors to hear you talk. So I want to share this. I was super poor. Gina and I just got married. We moved to Arizona. This WPPI was happening in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had no money and we drove from Phoenix to Las Vegas. We changed in the parking lot to like put on clothes. So we just drove and we went to just bump into you, see your talk. And then we got back in the car and drove all the way back to Phoenix. Did not stay, had no money to stay. Right. Mm. And the crazy part of the reason why I share that story is I think there is something about, there's something about when you know you're supposed to be in someone's life, you, you do things like that, crazy, weird mm. things like that. When I wrote that letter, this was before that, when I came and saw you, I, we didn't want you to know that we were like coming there just to see you. So we acted like we were there for everything, <laughs> but I just wanted to come and be like, I gotta be a part of this person's life. And so I think that you're that kind of person. I tell that story because I think that a lot of people probably have that story. And I think that when we realized that we became friends, um, I think that, can I say this? I think that you're one of the most selfless people that I've met. And I think that that's why I want your people right now in this space to understand that um, because of how much you give. And it's not just about asking questions and doing this co-host thing. I would go, I would come from anywhere in the world to do this, like hands down. Thank you. Yeah. So hold on. Don't, don't do that yet because I, I, actually, <laughs> I actually do have a question. That was a statement. Um, tell me this. You've been doing this for a while. You've been in the. In What's the, this? You've like been this. doing, you've been doing, you've been being a Sherpa for a long time. Yeah. Okay. And you've been giving and giving and giving and giving. And I just want to ask you, because I think people should know this is like, what can people do to help fill you up and to support you? And like, what are the ways that 
give you energy and life from this community because I feel like people would love to know how to do that in a way that fits in with your world. Mm. I think the answer, I'm certain the answer is a throwback to what um, Billie Jean was talking about. He talked about how what we do is we essentially make ourselves famous by what we share and the information we put out. Mm -hmm. And it's a strategy. And then he says that there are players like Kobe who could leverage media to make it part of that. And I don't know if it's in me. I don't know if it's the industry. I don't know if it's who I am that would be able to go behind that and get media backed money. I just think that there is like this massive, massive, massive tectonic shift that I think I could be a part of. Why am I crying? Why am I, why am I, uh, uh, no gangsters here. I didn't well, no, 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 I, no, I, I, I feel like, yeah, okay, so you yeah. ask, what can people do? Yeah. It's like yeah. when you share it, mm -hmm. when you share it, because the show isn't monetized. We do all of this as a labor of love. Like we just want to give to people and be like, you are the captain of your ship. Like go ahead and do it. Like how do we take our failures and turn them into lessons? And I'm like, my whole life, that's the only thing I want to do. And so anyway, okay, okay. Got it together, got it together, got it together. Is when people share the show and when people leave reviews and when people do that, it's just like, damn, that 30 second review really has an impact for what we do in the back end. So what do I want people to do? Share it, because if, it, if you got one thing from it, somebody else can get one thing. And that's, that's how we make an impact. So even if the media dollars aren't necessarily there, there's a group of people who can become the media. Yep. Like, that's what I'm about. Like, I'm a, like, I don't know, you, like, you can take the girl the hood, you can't take the hood out of the girl. You know, it's like, come on, like, there's, like, there's, there's a resistance, there's a movement, there's a thing, like, there's a big, and I hate saying this, because it sounds like I have a chip on my shoulder, maybe I do, but like, we can give a big middle finger to the way that things are done. Right. And it's like, if I can become a pioneer of being like, that's the system, let's freaking break the system and make anybody somebody. And like, to me, I'm like, I do that. And I'm like, oh, dang, game over. Yeah, but it misses, don't miss it. Because the, the reason why this is welling up and this is emotional is because it's a grind. Like you've yes. been doing this and sharing for yes. so long, right? Yes. So the reason why I bring it up is like, um, one, I'm the greatest uh, talk show <laughs> host of all time, right? And I got Jasmine to cry. <laughs> no, no, all right, all right. I'll, I'll so be very serious. I'll be very serious. I'll be very serious. So you, you the one thing I was, I love that people can share it. I love that this is a labor of love. It takes a very long slog, the dig process for this, yeah. for you to be able to do that for a, yeah. this long. And yeah. I, so the last question I'll have, and I'll just leave it here because we've been talking for a long time. Um, I feel emotional um, and I'm glad we could edit this because I have, <laughs> I don't want to be the, we can't be too crying. We can't be too criers. Um, what, what is it that makes you keep doing this? And let me say this, this is, this is the, the, cause there's an evolution happening. Like I've seen it. I'm watching like, here's a crazy part. Like we talk, but I, I've seen this. There's a next phase of this whole thing. And it's mm. not like, it's not the podcast. Mm. It's not courses. Mm. Like you could give all of this away forever and mm. you will because that's who you are. Mm. But I could see that there's like a, you're coming out of your skin, something's happening. Mm -hmm. Can you share any of that with us? Could you share like the fact that, do you feel that? Like you're, you're kind of transitioning into something else? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's been, you know, 2022 was, dang it, like the worst. It was the worst. And I knew that you, ha you have to be broken to change. And 2022 broke me. And so when I started 2023, the, my word of the year, like I never choose my word, the word comes to me. My word of the year was rebirth. Mm. And so I knew I was being called to change. I know I'm being called to change. And I'm very uncomfortable building in public when you don't know what you're building. Marcus, it's been hard, man. Yeah. And so when I texted you in Santa Barbara and I'm like, I'm, I'm becoming a new thing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm becoming and I need a space to create it. And I can't create, I can't paint in my apartment. I got to paint in the front lawn yeah. and you don't know what you're painting, you know? And like, that's, that's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. But here's the cool part is that, you know, it's funny when we were listening to Johnny talk about like where he starts on a canvas. Yeah. Yes. I told you the whole thought, word. Well, I saw, I saw your whole body ch movement change and your face change mm -hmm. because I think that you're this close to the canvas right now. I know. And it's really cool because I think the next best thing and the next evolution and how, why you're like jumping out of your skin because you're in this crazy growth mode and everybody's just kind of coming along for it is that you're going to probably step back and look at what you've been painting. Mm. 
that makes sense? It does. And I feel like um, when, you, when you hear things and you don't want to listen. And so JD was the first to say, I think you need a break. And I'm like, no, I think I need to work more. I need to do more. And um, when Johnny had said, you know, you take, you take a step back. And I think um, hearing all of it is I do need to take a step back. But my concern is that I come back from the break and people say, so what are you going to paint? Uh, and I'm like, that expectation of taking a step back and then like having the courage to go back and put your nose against the canvas and say, I still don't know. And I told JD, I'm like, I'm not ready for that pressure. I'm not ready for that pressure to come back and say, this is the thing that we're building. And so I'm going to take a break. I know I am, but I'm putting up a lot of parameters to say like, I'm taking a break without expectation. And I need that for me. And I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get to the end of the year. You know, we're recording this. It's debuting. It's August. And I don't know if I'm going to know what I'm painting by the end of the year. It's and okay. yeah, I think I, and I've had to come to that level of acceptance. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I think that it takes a lot of courage to be able to step away from that, to be able to gain the perspective. The part is, is like, there's always going to be an anticipation for what Jasmine does next. Sorry. Like, you're going to have to have that. But what you do, you have way more control of, like, understanding how it fits in. And mm -hmm. you get to now paint whatever you want. Mm -hmm. and so that's the cool part is freedom in that. Um, but I just want to tell you, I think I'm proud of you. Thank I, you. I'm very excited for you. And just to be here in this space together and be able to experience kind of the evolution is, is a really Thank you. honor. So one thing that we learned was that community is important and people who just give you the space to be. And so it took you a lot of work to get some of like your really talented, amazing friends down here. It took you a lot of work to get down here. It's on your time and your dime. And um, I think I'm going to look back. Like I know what in me, Marcus. Hmm. Like I know what in me. Hmm. I know there's something like big in me. Oh yeah, I see it. And I'm going to look back and be like, it was the community who shut up. So I just want to say thank you. Dang it. I love you. I love you. I'm not giving you a crack. All right. Well, uh, see you guys later, everybody. It's been really, it's been really fun. Uh, what a way to wrap it. But seriously, though, thank you. This, is, this is awesome. Please keep doing this. Bring in really interesting people. Um, biggest thank fan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You want to close this out? You yeah. want to look at camera one and close it out? Yeah, where's camera one? Right there. Okay. Oh, cool. right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> camera two. Camera two. Um, Everyone, thank you so much. It's a, it's a complete honor and privilege to be involved with friends who are doing amazing things in the world. And so I just feel like I hope you got something from my really cool friends that we got to be on your show. Um, and until then, we will, uh, you know, please join the conversation, be yeah. a part of the community, and uh, continue to watch and share this uh, to get the message out there to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I thank love you. you and Gina and love the girls. You thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.